Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the Cannot fail when the howling storms of death. 
said, it's good to be back in the Lord's house this evening. Like I said, we appreciate each and every one that's come out to be with us tonight. We do ask you to be much in prayer. Prayer for those that's not with us. We have a lot that's out on vacation and traveling and other places. I know we've got some that went down to uh, uh, Revival at Corinth tonight. I know there was a few said they were going to go down there because they was having youth night. So you be praying about that. Uh, also, Corinth will be in Revival up till through Wednesday night. If you want to go down and be a part of that, Brother Josh Jones is preaching down there. We're going to do our best to go down tomorrow at, uh, tomorrow evening uh, to be a part of that service. So, But you be much in prayer for that. But we're here gathered here tonight to worship and to serve the Lord. Amen. And, I, and we thank God for you. We always like to give you an opportunity to serve the Lord. So maybe somebody tonight's got a song on your heart, something you'd like to do for the Lord this evening. Maybe a word or a testimony. Hearts and minds clear. It's good to be saved. Amen. I'll make mention again real quick. Also, if uh, if you're signed up for the Carowinds trip, please, uh, all adults, please have your money to uh, Miss uh, Melissa or have it to, to Sierra right here. They'll take care of that. Uh, uh, adults, your $56 a piece, and it, if that does include a, uh, a one meal throughout the park somewhere through the day, it gives you a card, a voucher to get a meal through there, which is an entree and a side and a drink, I think. So. But uh, just take care of that if you would. And we do uh, uh, ask that you uh, get that in by the 23rd. I think it's the 23rd that we want to have that, which is a couple Sundays away. And that way we can get all the tickets bought and get everything paid for up front. Sierra said she didn't want to take money at Carowinds. I'll take your money anywhere. It don't bother me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just be, do, 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 have that take care of if you can. Anybody else got any other announcements that need to be made this evening? If not, we're going to open our Bibles up over the book of St. Matthew, chapter number 6. St. Matthew, chapter number 6. When you find your place, if you're able, please stand with us for the reading of God's Word. I thank God for His mercy and His grace. I thank Him for all that He does for us each and every day. I would also like to make mention as well, if you were here this morning and you saw the demonstration this morning and what God did for us of the, of the transformation, I of what that Kool-Aid did in water. I, I want you, and then we saw you, we saw how the sugar was added to it, and it still didn't taste very good uh, until it got stirred up. But there's one thing I want you to know today. But Riley, who makes the best Kool-Aid in the world? Tap off. Just so you know, once it got stirred up, once it, all the right ingredients got added in, uh, the right stuff tasted pretty daggone good, didn't it, Riley? Riley liked it awful good. So my, so listen, I, I believe the world would like it as well if you and I as children of God I, would get stirred up. Uh, not get a taste of old dull Christians, uh, but get a taste of sweet Christians. Amen? I, get a taste of the sweet stuff. The uh, Bible says here in the book of Matthew, chapter number 6, and we're going to begin to read in verse number 1. The Bible says, Take heed that you do not your elms before men uh, to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father uh, which is in heaven. Therefore, uh, when thou dost thine elms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, uh, that they may have glory of men. Uh, verily, I say unto you, uh, that, that they, they have their reward. Uh, but when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, uh, that thine alms may be in secret, uh, and the fa thy father which seeth thee in secret, uh, himself shall he reward thee openly. Let's pray to him, Father. Uh, we come to you this evening, Lord, to humble ourselves before thee. Uh, Thanking you for another day and another opportunity, God, to gather out on this side of eternity. Uh, Lord, to gather together as thy people. Uh, Lord, to be able to hear from heaven. I, I pray now, dear God, you'll help us to get out of the way. Uh, those things that might be contrary to thy will, we confess. Uh, Lord, I pray those things that, are, uh, that need to be gone are gone. Uh, and I pray now, dear Heavenly Father, that you'll fill us up with thy words. Uh, place from heaven the very words that you'd have us to hear on our hearts and on our lips. Uh, that we might be said, and Lord, I pray to open our hearts up, uh, that we'll be ready to receive from heaven those very things uh, that's good for us. Uh, I pray now, dear Heavenly Father, for each one that's gathered out. I don't know hearts and lives like you do. I, 
Lord, you know every burden, every trial, every temptation, every uh, heartache that they're going through. I, I pray, dear God, that you'll just touch them in, all, uh, in the way that you can. Uh, and whatever it is that they need, you'll supply I pray most of all, Lord, if there's one here tonight uh, that does not know the free pardon of sin, uh, does not know what it means to be saved, uh, I pray they won't leave this place tonight, dear God, before they get it settled. Uh, if there's one here tonight that needs to be restored, uh, God, it's just gotten cold and needs to get back, uh, backslid on you, Lord, draw them up. Uh, lead God in the rent with every name that's on our prayer list. Uh, touch those that are not able to be out here tonight. Uh, God, but for those of us that are here, may we magnify your name. And may you open up the windows of heaven and give us the blessing that we need. We thank you, we love you, we praise you. In Jesus' blessed name I pray. Amen. Amen. I think this is some awful helpful for us, scripture tonight. I, I think we live in a world today that where people like to be seen. I, people like to be recognized. Uh, they like to be lifted up for their own things and the things that they do. Amen. Uh, well, let me just first of all say that I am nothing uh, and could do nothing without my Savior. Amen. I, I tell you, as we have shown you and show you this morning uh, in that little demonstration of the water and the Kool-Aid, uh, without that water, without the Kool-Aid, without the sugar in it, uh, we're just plain and bland. Amen. Uh, just plain and bland. Uh, hey, I'm going to tell you something tonight. I, I'm glad that I serve a God that completely changes things. Amen. Uh, here's what the Bible was saying tonight. Uh, there's some things that we need to take heed of. Amen. Uh, right here in verse chapter number 6 and verse number 1, uh, the first thing that he said was to take heed. Uh, you know what that simply means? Uh, that simply means this. Uh, to pay attention uh, or to be mindful uh, or to wake up and listen. Amen. Man, uh, to put it in our terms, uh, hey, that we sometimes uh, we just need to get woke up. Uh, sometimes we just need to start listening uh, for what God would have us to do, uh, for what God would have us to hear. Uh, a lot of times we're closed off. Uh, a lot of times we're so mindful of our things and the things that we want. Uh, we get so un uh, uh, unaware of the things going on around us, uh, or unaware of the things that God has for us. Uh, it's important uh, that we do alms, and if you're under, if you don't know what alms are, uh, he's talking about the works of man. Uh, he's talking about our works and the things that he saved us to do, uh, and the things that he's called us to do. Uh, hey, there's a lot of people today uh, uh, that do those works and do those alms uh, that they might receive a reward here on this earth. Amen. Uh, I seen a statement the other day. Uh, uh, if, I can't remember what it was on, but the statement was this. Uh, uh, let's cut out the preacher's money and see how many are really called. Uh, well, listen, I was preaching before they started paying, amen? Uh, and I can tell you right now, uh, hey, it does matter. Uh, hey, listen, I believe that you ought to do what you can to take care of the man of God, uh, to those that are serving, whether it be the man of God, whether it be the missionaries. Uh, we take up all, the offering you gave tonight and give on Wednesday night. Uh, it goes to help missionaries. Uh, hey, the offering we took up after the service this morning goes to help our youth. Uh, there's things that needs funded, Amen. I, but I tell you this much, uh, our service to God uh, should never be based on the monetary things, the money uh, that comes in, uh, or nor should it be uh, based on the praise of man. Right. Look, he said, take heed. Uh, it's important that you do things. It's important that you pay attention. Uh, it's important that you get the right mindset. Uh, why did he say take heed when you do your works? Uh, he said for us to take heed when we've done our works uh, because our works should not be about us. Amen. Uh, our works should not be about you and me. Uh, it should not be about what others think of me. Uh, listen, I shouldn't come to church because uh, somebody will notice if I'm not there. Uh, hey, listen, we do notice if you're not here. Amen. Uh, if you don't believe me, uh, you come see me after church tonight. I'll show you the list I keep. No, I'm just kidding you. But I want you to realize uh, hey, you are noticed uh, when you're not here. Uh, you're noticed when you are here and noticed but missed when you're not. Uh, but that's not the reason you should come to church. Uh, the reason you are to come to church uh, is because that's what God wants you to do. Uh, you are to come to church uh, because that's the right place to be. Uh, you are to come to church uh, because that's what God instituted uh, and commanded us to do. Listen, we ought to be coming to church. We ought to be doing the elms. Uh, we ought to be doing our works out there in the world. Uh, hey, did others see those things, but not that we might receive recognition of them? Uh, 
we should do, he said for us to do those things in secret, amen. I, he said not to let your left hand know uh, what your right hand's doing. Uh, listen, it's not important about what we did. Uh, it's not important about those things. Uh, it's not important about where the money came from, amen. Uh, what's important uh, is a matter of fact of what you do uh, because God instructed you to do it, amen. Uh, one of my all-time favorite movies. Uh, it's called Faith in the Giants. Uh, if you've never saw that movie, I highly encourage you uh, to watch that movie. Uh, it's about a, a football coach uh, that is trying his best to serve God, uh, trying his best uh, to live a, a, a godly life. Uh, and it goes on and on about a lot of things. Uh, but he changes some people's lives uh, by living a life in front of them, uh, by living a life in front of them and doing his alms in secret. Uh, his life is changed uh, and one of the ball players uh, that was had to transfer uh, to his school uh, uh, one of the best ball players he had transferred uh, from another school because he got kicked out of another school uh, for being mean uh, hey his life got changed he got saved uh, his dad was very wealthy uh, and because of the change that he saw uh, and the influence he saw that uh, he had he had over his son uh, he bought that man a new truck uh, and he told no he told his son uh, don't you tell nobody. Don't you open your mouth. It wasn't about giving him and getting the recognition for a new truck. It was just doing what God wanted you to do. That's what God calls us to do every day. Take heed. Pay attention. Listen up. That's what God's saying. It's important that we're not only that we get in the right mindset. Look. I am a firm believer. I'm a firm believer. When this thing's passed around, you'll never outgive God. You'll never outgive God. And I want you to realize something. These things that we do in here, there was a story in the Bible about a little old widow woman. There was a lot of people in the congregation that had piled in some big funds. Pharisees were there. That's the righteous in the Bible who thought they were, that's the religious people, let me say. Uh, that was the religious cult of the time. They piled in their money. But that little old widow woman, she threw in two mites, less than two cents in our time. She threw in two mites. And Jesus said that she had thrown in more than all. Uh, why did she throw in more and all? How did she throw more and all than anybody else? Because she gave all that she had, but she gave what God had instructed her, and she held not back that which she thought that she might need through the week. Listen, there's been a lot of times in my life when I thought I couldn't give God what he deserved. Listen, I can preach on tithing and 10% and all this mess and all this stuff. But look, you know, look, tithing, you give what God tells you to give. Huh? You give what God, if God blesses you more, you give more. Amen? Listen, I, I, there's times in our life, Melissa and I, when we real, we just, there was a time in our life when we decided and we realized, uh, hey, that we have to tithe. We have to give that which God has instructed us to give. Whether we pay anything else or not, our tithes are going to be paid. We're going to give God his portion. Now, there's times in our life when you can look at our finances and you can say, man, this don't add up. Hey, there's a lot more going out than they are coming in. Now, but I found out if I give God his first, he always gives me what I need. Now, I may not have more than enough to make it through the month, but I've got enough to get through the month. Hey, I may not have more this month, but I might have more next month. That's God. Do your works. Do your alms. Do your gifts. Now, do that, take heed uh, and realize who it is uh, that we're serving uh, and what he can do with it. Listen, we just have to deliver the message. We just have to deliver what God gives us. We just share what God gives us, whether that be monetary or money, whether that be physical, whether that be spiritual. We give that and let God do the work. Amen. We just, sometimes we don't even realize 
that's how God works. Sometimes we don't even realize what God's doing. I'll tell you this, and we'll move on. But he said, take heed in doing your works. Take heed. Why? Be, be very important. Be, pay very close attention to what you do. Look, if we're doing something out there in the world, if we're doing something we like, we'll put every effort into it. We'll make sure that we do the very best job that we can. Amen? We'll make sure that we do the very best job that we can because it's something we like, it's something we enjoy. Hey, if we don't do that with God, if we're not enjoying God, if we don't enjoy the works of the Lord, we're not going to give it our all. It's important that you take heed that that's what's important in life because you never know what's going to happen. This morning we preached that message. This morning we gave an altar call. People come up to the altar. Hey, but as far as I know, nobody got saved on this altar today during the altar call. But after service, I was shaking hands. And while I was shaking hands, hands. Jason was leading a little girl to the, to the Lord. Hey, when that got done, she, he led her brother to the Lord. Hey, we don't know when it's going to happen. We don't know how it's going to happen. But what we have to do is to do the work that God give us and realize how important it is. How important that work that God gave you is. Take heed. Take heed. He said, do it in secret, that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. But he also said in the book of Matthew, chapter number 16, and verse number 6, he said this, Then Jesus saith unto them, Take heed, and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. In other words, what he's saying is, when, I, when you go down, he was talking about the religious groups at that time. I, we had the Pharisees, uh, and we had the Sadducees. Uh, they were two of the greatest religious, group, uh, religious groups in the, in the time. Uh, one of them believed in the rapture, one of them did not believe in the rapture. Uh, but neither one of them believed that Jesus was the Son of God. Amen. Uh, they, did, they believed that the Messiah was going to be somebody that come uh, and set up a worldly throne, uh, set up a worldly kingdom. Uh, what they failed to realize was, uh, and what Jesus was trying to tell them was, uh, it's never been about this world. Uh, his kingdom kingdom is not of this world. Hey, that's what we what he's telling us in Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 6. He's telling us to take heed about the things that the Pharisees and the Sadducees do. That means for us not to get bogged down in religion. Amen. That not doesn't mean that we aren't to have some good foundational doctrinal beliefs, which we do. Amen. I believe that we ought to be solid. I believe that we ought to be firm. And we ought to be solid in those things. But we shouldn't be carried away with every whim or doctrine. Hey, don't get caught up in the latest fads. Don't get caught up in the latest things of the world that the churches of this world are bringing in. But make sure we stay solid on the rock of Jesus Christ. Look, it's important that church, and it's important that our spiritual walk with Christ, it is, it is deeply rooted in the rock of Judah. The lion, the lamb, it's important that, it's right, that we're solid right there. He's saying take heed, pay attention. You know everything you see that has God on it or has a cross on it is not of God. Huh. Look, the devil's real good at painting things up. The devil's real good at masquerading things. You know, even in church, he's real good at masquerading. Talked to somebody a while back, and listen, I know we live in a contemporary world. Not everybody listens to the same kind of music. Not everybody enjoys the same kind of music. But listen, I, I have criteria for music, amen? I, it mu it, you ought to be able to understand it, first of all. If you can't understand it, uh, then turn it off. Get rid of it. It ought to tell the story of Jesus. It ought to line up with that book. That's what I, that's how I base music. 
If it don't line up with the book, it don't tell the story of Christ, uh, and I can't understand it. I, I, if it don't fall, if it don't hit all three of them, uh, I'm getting rid of it. I'm not listening to it. Uh, but here's what I want to tell you: the devil will come in, uh, and he'll conf- he'll kind of camouflage things, uh, and he'll slip little stuff in. Uh, it's important that we take heed uh, to the acts. Uh, he said, Aaron 16. Uh, he said, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. What was leaven? Uh, leaven was the sin. Uh, leaven was the things that come in. Uh, he said, A little leaven, leaven of the whole lump. Uh, it don't take much uh, to take over. Amen. It don't take much to take over. We live in a world today we live th- th- that wants us to celebrate the awfulest sins of the world for a whole stinking month. Huh? It blows my mind. We want all this junk going on, and it want to. You know why they want you to do that? So you'll accept it, make it easier. Here's what I say about this pride and all this. You know what Bible tells us? Here's amazing. Uh, everybody wants to uh, wants to harp on the fact that they that, that uh, homosexual groups has, have taken the fr- taken the rainbow and made something evil out of it. But here's what it gets me. They call it pride. You know what the Bible says about pride? It goeth before destruction. Hey man. It's the first thing. It goes before destruction. Here's what I say. We need to realize and stand up. The Bible said take heed because those little things that we allow to come in, it'll begin to leaven the whole lump. I believe we are to be solid. It don't matter who we are, who we're around. We are to be children of God. We are to love people, but we are to love God and never change to be what and accept what everybody else is. Amen. That's just part of it. Look, I think we ought to love people. Jesus sat with sinners. He sure enough did. He sat right down with sinners. But he did not partake of their evil deeds. He did not change. He did not accept. But he was him. You know what? Every time I find out and I read where Jesus sat down with sinners, he gave them the word. Huh? He gave them a chance. I don't find in here I don't find in here, somebody tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't find in here where he went down and sat with sinners and they didn't get it right and he went back to the same place, to the same table. He, he gave them the word. Most of the time when he went and sat down with them, when he went and sat down with them, a big portion of them changed. Amen. The Pharisees said, Who is this that sitteth at the table of sinners? Jesus said this, I come not to call the righteous, but those that are lost, those that need a Savior, those that need a physician. Hey, don't get caught up in the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Take heed. Amen. He said for us to take heed. Take heed that we do our alms. Take heed that we don't get caught up in just the little old traditions of the church. Amen. Look, I think there's some things that are good. I think there's some traditions that are very good. But I also know this. We can get so caught up in tradition. We can get so caught up in custom that we forget Jesus. Do you believe that? I'll give you a perfect example. Bible said that Mary and Joseph out of custom went down to Jerusalem to be taxed while they were at Jerusalem they did their business they did all the things they needed to do they loaded up and they headed home and after about three days you know what happened they realized that Jesus was nowhere among them You know where they left him? They left him back down there at the house of God. They went back down there to find him. And he was in the house of the Lord. And you know what they said? What in the world's going on? This is what Jesus said. Why was you searching for me? Know you not that I must be about my father's business. I'm here to tell you, customs, customs will cause you to leave Jesus out of it. I think there's some good I think there's some good traditions. But don't get caught up in traditions. Make sure you're serving the Lord. Make, listen, I think we do some good things here. 
I think we do some grand things here at Heavenly Light Baptist Church. But I know this, when we cease to put Christ at the center of it, when we cease to just stop standing on what's right, that's the day I leave. That's the day you won't have to worry about me resigning. I'll just tell you I'm gone. Amen. I'll just tell you I'm out. You won't have to worry about firing me, voting me out. I'll just say, I'll see you, Sadducees and Pharisees. I'm out the door. Thank God I don't think I have to worry about that. But I tell you right now, <coughs> we look around our country and we look around our communities and we can see it happening in our very own backyards. Hey, well, they'd rather be more like a club and a bar than they had about the Lord, about church, and about God's house. He said over there in Matthew chapter number 18, in verse number 10, he said, Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. He told them over there, he said, not only should we take heed on the elms and the works that we do, not only take heed on the people and, the, and, and, and our worship to him, that's what he was talking about when he said, not to be, be, take heed of the leaven of the Pharisees, but here he goes on and says, take heed of the, and despise not the little ones, these children, these little ones. Hey, I thank God that we have a church that has a lot of young folks, that has a lot of youth in it. Hey, listen, that youth, it energizes us that are getting older, amen, to the point sometimes the body can't take it. Hey, but what I'm telling you is this, don't ever despise those little ones. Don't try to put them in a box. Don't try to send them to a room. Hey, I tell you, train them up in the way they should go and let them see the parents and grandparents being the example of how they should live. Some may say, well, they ought to act better. Well, here's what I say. You ought to act better too. Huh? There's a lot. Look, don't be pointing fingers. Donnie Davenport used to say this. He always preached like this. I don't know if y'all knew Donnie Davenport. He died many years ago. He always preached like this. He said, this one's for you. These three's for me. Look, when we point the finger at somebody, we need to do a little looking on our side. Now, look, I know there's some, uh, some heathens, amen. I know there's some and act like I'm mean, crazy. But you know why they act crazy? Because they have been taught to be that way. Despise not. That ain't, look, that ain't just about tolerating them. That ain't just about tolerating them. I think to despise not also means to train them up. Don't just get mad at them because they don't do the right thing. Don't get mad at them because they do the wrong thing. But they ought to be trained up to do the right thing. The Bible says to train up a child in the way that he should go. For when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Listen, that word, no saint. Listen, they may live as wicked as can be. They may get out there and do some of the awfulest things. Listen, we got it in our family. We understand it. But here's what I'll tell you this. Uh, deep down in their hearts, they'll know what's right and they'll know what's wrong. Uh, it won't be because mom and dad didn't teach them. Uh, it won't be because mom and uh, grandma and uh, grandpa didn't teach them. Uh, it's going to be because uh, they did it on their own. Uh, I despise not. Uh, hey, that means allow them to come uh, and do everything you can uh, to train them up. It's important. It's important that they see Christ not only at church, but it's important that they see Christ in you, at home, in their home life. And that's important. He went on and he said over in the book of Mark, chapter number 4, 24, he said this, and he said unto them, Take heed what you hear, a measure you need. It shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall be more given. Here's what, here's what the Lord was saying unto us. It's important. Pay attention. Listen up. The things that we hear, the things that we listen to, the things that we allow to come in, those will guide your life on an everyday basis. Look, if you put yourself around worldly people who are giving you worldly advice, this is what blows my mind. Look, we live in the world of social media, do we not? 
I mean, people's all over. Look, we've got social media as well. We try to do a lot with the church through it and different things to try to spread the gospel. This blows my mind. Church people will go to somebody in the world for advice. Is that not the dumbest thing you ever heard? Look, I want godly advice. You'll never get godly advice going to people in the world. You'll have to go to God's people. You'll have to go to God. You'll have to go to church. Listen, the Bible tells us plainly here those things that we hear, those things that we listen to, those things that we, I see it all the time. We hear young folks, we hear little kids, I mean, using profanity and taking the Lord's name in vain. Where do you think they got that from? Home. Somebody had to teach it to them. And I promise you, if they learn it here, you tell me for now. And I promise you, we'll deal with it. We'll take care of that. But you're going to have a hard time convincing me that one of our teachers done it. One of our leaders done it. Here's what I want to tell you. It's important the things that we hear. It's important the advice that we get. It's important those that we listen to. The Bible said to try the spirits and see if they're of God or not. It's important that we know and have trust and faith uh, in the ones that we turn to uh, and the ones that we are uh, uh, putting our faith in to give us the right guidance. Hey, it's important those things that we hear. Uh, you know why it's important? He said because those things that you hear, take heed. Not only is it important to the ones we listen to, but it's important when you get around people and you get in church that you listen to what God's trying to give you. You want to know why it's so important? Because in Mark chapter 4 and verse 14, he said this. He said, take heed what you hear. Because what you hear, what measure, what amount that you hear, what amount of the word of God that you've been hearing, what, what, what amount of preaching you've been sitting under, what instruction God's been trying to give you, that's what you're going to be measured by. You're not going to be measured by what the world's measured by. You're not going to be measured by what this one over here is measured by. You're not going to be measured what somebody else is measured by. But you're going to be measured by what you've been instructed to do. Not only what I have given you, but what God has given you. Be a chance players that take heed. Listen up to the things that God's trying to instruct us. He wants us to learn, and he wants us to grow. I'm going to hurry up. He said in the book of Mark, chapter number 13, and verse number 33, he said, take heed, watch, and pray that you know when the time is. Look, it's no secret that we're living in the last days. He said over in the book of 2 Kings, chapter, or 1 Kings, chapter number 3, he said, if we're in the last days, shall be perilous times. Perilous times, dangerous times. You want to know the only thing I believe that is stopping God from sending his son back to rapture the church out? It's him just saying, go get him. I don't think there's anything else has to be done. I don't think there's anything else has to come. I believe the only thing that's stopping him is God knows when that last one's coming and that last one's getting in and it just hadn't happened yet. Thank God there was two more this morning. I hope there's some more tonight. But he said for us to watch and to pray. He said take heed. Watch and pray. Pay attention. Listen up. It's important, hey, that we start praying and we start watching and we start getting ready. Why? Because time is running out. Every head bowed and every eye closed, every Christian praying, every heart searching. I have a whole lot more I could have got through. That's where I want to stop this evening. That's what the Lord said to do, stop. I ask you, take heed. Take heed in your life right now. Are there things in your life that need to change? Are there things in your life that you need to start doing? Things in your life that God has called you to do, but you've just not went there yet? You've just not stepped out yet? Look, God knows what he's doing. God has not asked you or chosen you by mistake. God has a purpose for your life. If you're here tonight and you've got something on your heart, 
something you need to pray about, something you need to pray for, somebody you need to lift up. Give it to them. Altar's open here tonight for anyone for any reason. And I'm not asking a lot of questions tonight. I just want you to know this. We love you. We're praying for you. And I want you to know that you are important to us. You're each and every one. You are important. And we want you to know that God wants to use you. He wants to lift you up and he wants to change your life. He wants to strengthen you and give you the ability to walk closer. <coughs> Altar's open for anyone for any reason. If you want to come tonight, if you want to get on this altar, something you need to rededicate your life, you need to ask for help, you need to ask for guidance, would you just come? Just come. She's going to finish up playing. We're going forward. We're not going to give a long invitation tonight. I believe the business has been said. The word's been spoken and the business will be done. Brother Eddie, you pray for us. Appreciate you tonight. Maybe somebody's got a word or a testimony on your heart before we close. Hearts and minds clear this evening. It's good to be saved. Let's all stand to our feet. Do be much in prayer one for another. Do remember as you're out and about this week, tell somebody about the Lord. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them you love them. God bless you.